along the time we've had some huge challenges. So this is one project we did. I don't know if you, you'll remember the uh, Sydney Olympics, so Stadium Australia. Um, I met a guy at some steel conference or something and, and uh, he said, um, we we're talking to Multiplex and um, they, wanted, they wanted somebody to design and construct the end canopies uh, after the Olympics was finished. And so we took on that challenge and, uh, and we, we, we built that and we had to build that ready for the Rugby World Cup. Um, and it's, it's quite interesting, all that, all, we had to design all the, all the cladding system and that actually was, that actually, uh, we had to charter a, 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 a Boeing 747 I think it was and we bought that in from the Netherlands. So yeah, so, uh, so that was, uh, that was uh, something that uh, was, was quite interesting. But we've had many, many challenges and this job here, we took the risk, we had to throw an extra 300 tonne of steel in, in it and we had a great margin and the margin got wiped away. And that's, there's a big challenge in, in the risk. So normally we wouldn't have high margins. We had a 30% margin on that job and it, we end up making 5%. But when, you take, when you're doing high risk jobs, you have to have higher margins because things go wrong. And that was, we were very lucky. If we were in with, with a normal 10% margin, bang, we would have lost one and a half million dollars on the job. So they're things that you, you need to, risk, risk is a big thing where everybody <coughs> must look at. And uh, my father always taught me, always look at the worst case scenario. Whatever you do, make sure, whatever, whatever the worst case scenario, that you're not gonna get yourself in financial trouble. So another thing what happened, I suppose we went through those, those uh, the 2000 and before the 2008 crash. Um, <coughs> everybody was spending money, we spent no money. So we actually kept cash. Um, but what happened, I put on a, a big board, had the best CFO, the best everybody, and I ended up reporting to this bloody mob of, mob of uh, people, who were good people, but I'm, a, I'm an operational person, I want to make things happen, I want to do things. And so when the GFC hit, I'd read this great book called Good to Great, there were two things, and one was <coughs> get the wrong people off the bus and the right people off the bus. So in one day, I, just, I actually, and this isn't something I'm proud of, but I put off our chairman, a non-executive director, our CFO, our HR director, and our IT manager, because they didn't fit our operational culture. It was the best thing, best thing I ever did. Now, not that they were bad people, but it was because, um, you know, I needed to get back to the basics. I needed to get back to arms, and it was really, really important. The other thing that I really focused on, great book, good to great, is looked at what can we be the best in the world at, what drives an economic engine, and, um, and um, what, uh, what you're deeply passionate about. And um, of course, Australia is a resource bowl to Asia. So as they prosper, they're gonna need all our minerals, which is really, really important. And also, for every, they're gonna need a lot more protein, so meat. And for every kilogram of, of, uh, of meat, you need, um, well somebody told me seven kilograms, I heard the other day it was um, 12 kilograms of, of, of uh, wheat and barley and, and products like that. So our farmers are gonna prosper. So we made a strategic decision that we would go hard in mining and in agriculture. And so from that, we've built what I call the pillars of arms. So, um, and I'll, I'll, I'll go through this in a bit more depth, but we've got our design and construct business, our mining services business, our steel solutions business, our agribusiness, and also we, we uh, have a bit of property. So, and from that we've built locations around Australia. So, and we've really tried to, to drought proof our business or recession proof our business. So we're in a lot of different markets. Well, one, some are up, some are down. Um, and um, so through this strategy, we've, we've built a, an agri, our agri business. So we have six man, main manufacturing sites and two sub assembly sites. Um, and we've had an amazing year down in Victoria Queensland, New South Wales are in drought, but it's really given us that focus. So since 2008, we've really bought a lot of our opposition out and now we've got a strong foot up. So we've got about 60% of the grain silo market um, in everywhere by WA. But our plans are, we're gonna move into WA and we actually believe we can take this business international. So um, we, we believe it's a really good business. Um, but just starting from those agri Products. This is actually a, a project we're commissioning in, uh, in Bunbury in Western Australia at the moment. So this is a, uh, a big 50,000 tonne 
grain facility where we've designed and construct the whole thing. Um, there's a big conveyor that goes out, um, and so that's a, that's a, a really a major project, and that's that's our next stage of evolution that we're we're moving into. So then we have our design and construct business, so our construction business. We strategically have offices um, around the um, around the area, and typically we do industrial buildings. So this is Lynn Fox's facility up in um, up in Queensland that we we built. Um, we also do mining infrastructure. It's been very successful. So we've become the main mining infrastructure person for BHP um, iron ore up at Newman, and it's been amazing. So um, and that's been, that's given us huge growth. But with that growth, we've built up our business, and now suddenly there's not going to be as much work there. So now we're working other places, and we're very lucky. We've picked up a lot of work lately. What replaces that BHP work? Also, process plants. So. This is Adelaide Brighton Cement. We just um, did uh, their, their latest cement um, upgrade where we do all the mechanical work as well. And we've just been awarded um, the Cement Australia um, upgrade um, here. Which, um, I think there was an announcement that Adelaide Brighton Cement were predicting a $15 million decrease in their profit because of this project. Um, but it's something we're, we're getting into. And basically our business is all about steel. We have a great competitive advantage in steel and that's what we work with. Another new product is, is car parks. So I said to our construction director, I said, I'd love to build a car park. Next thing is, he's won the Franklin Street car park. Then, uh, then he's done the Adelaide Entertainment Centre car park. And now we're doing the Tea Tree Plaza park and ride. And really, they're, they're actually, they look quite complicated, but they're, they're quite simple steel structures. So it's really just developing our businesses as we come. We've also realised that expenditure in Australia is gonna, is gonna start to decline. So we're really ramping up our, our um, uh, mining, mining maintenance business. So we've just actually bought, um, uh, we had a little business limping down, we've just bought Sandvik uh, out and we've moved into their facilities and we're just building this facility in Darwin at the moment to cater for the gas um, outline. So you know, we're really looking at each business and really looking where to grow. So this is our, our factory at, at Kingsford. Um, it gives us a great base. We also have a procurement office in China, so if people want a cost effective, we, we actually try to completely discourage it and we don't do a lot, but if, if that's a pre prerequisite, we'll, we'll do that for our clients. We also have a fantastic paint line, so this it really impresses clients with, with the investment we've made. We also have a mining services uh, business. Um, so up in Newman, we, we actually refurbish all Newman's, all BHP's houses up there. And this is typical, we have all our own intra-house trades. And that's our fantastic team um, up in Newman. So the real key for us is competitive advantage. And in business, you have to have a competitive advantage. I always believe that if it's, it's a bit like a street fight. If, you're gonna, if, uh, if somebody's going to come at you with a knife, you need to have a gun. You need to be better than your opposition. It's something we really focus on. So we do th through this in many ways. So we have a real focus on design. We want to be able to design better than, than any of anybody else. What's a, what's a real focus? And focus on buildability and things like that. We also want to have our own internal um, procurement factories and, and, uh, and, and crews and things like that, what gives us that advantage. Also our site capabilities. We have our own site people, what gives us a great advantage as well. Um, and also project delivery. So we're very much focused on looking after our client. We want to make sure that we have a thing called the wow factor. So if we do a job for somebody, our guys are expected to give a program, so we're going to finish early. We're going to meet budget. We're going to um, exceed our client's expectations. And I suppose that's been very successful for us. Um, we, our turnover um, early 90s was 3 million. This year will be over 300. And it's through relationships with people that we've been able to develop that, and it's through having great people. And that's really the key to anybody's success. So for us, our real powerful thing is really building that really strong culture. And to be honest, we've doubled in size in the last two years, and it's been a challenge. It's been a big challenge for us. We've had some jobs that haven't gone as well as they normally would because we've had to put on extra people that don't fit our culture. Those things are a real challenge. But as well as, as, well as uh, business, you know, you need to have some fun. You need to give back to the community. It's something that, that um, you know, we're very proud of. My wife and I developed a, a little property called Kingsford Homestead, so something where 
we're quite uh, proud of. It's where McLeod's Daughters was filmed, and and we've won um, Condé Nast top hotels in the world and uh, the fodder. So something we've got in, really involved in, and we're very passionate. And things like that. Me and a mate, we started a thing called the Tomahawk State Club um, in the Barossa, and, and Dad and I are barons. And um, my project, what I'm in charge of at the moment, is to build a new Barossa Grand Cellar um, for the Barossa community for the barons. So. You know, we like to get involved in, it, in a lot of those things what's really, really important. But at the end of the day, really the most important thing in life is really your family and really to, to look after your family and, uh, and that's, uh, that's something that I'm proud of. And you know, Hopefully our kids will, will get involved in the business. They're certainly keen at, that, at this stage and I think that's an, important, that's an important thing in life. So hopefully I've, I've uh, done this perfect time. So I, I must have had a few too many slides and I, I only had 15 to 20 minutes so I pushed it through a bit so uh, perfectly on the yeah.